Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are gonna be checking out Linux on the GHF51 board. So let's get started. Now, if you guys don't know what the GHF51 is, it's a Ryzen embedded SBC where I did a review on a couple of weeks ago. So I'll leave a link right here on the top left or top right, right over here, one of these corners. Just to give you a quick rundown, it's running a Ryzen R1606G, base clocked at 2.6, turbo boost to 3.2 with four gigs of RAM and 32 gigabytes of eMMC. And it's about 1.8 inch size, a little bit smaller than a Raspberry Pi 4. And the whole thing runs fanless. Now, I was planning to install Linux on this guy a lot sooner, but I ran into some troubles where I was actually detecting more partitions on the MMC that it shouldn't, like boot zero, boot one, and RMFS. And then I found out that I actually needed a BIOS update. So by the time if you guys receive this unit or you are planning to purchase this unit, you should have the new updated BIOS. But for me, since I had the review unit, I was still on an outdated BIOS. But yeah, I updated the BIOS, got everything working, and I was able to detect the hard drives properly. So here I am. I actually installed Manjaro Linux. Uh, this was one of the Linux that I was playing around with initially because it had a newer kernel update. And I was just thinking like maybe the kernel update would fix the problem with the BIOS. But eventually I just stuck with it. And this is where we are with it right now. On a fresh boot, this thing does run pretty lightweight. So let me pull up the system monitor here. And you're going to see it's about 1.4 gigs or 1.3 gigs of RAM usage on first boot. It does detect everything that it needs to. Because of the limited 4 gigs, I did throw in a swap drive in here just to be sure if more heavier intense programs. Now, everything runs really quick with this. As a matter of fact, I'm so surprised how smoothly this runs compared to other boards that I've tested Manjaro with or other boards in general. Like just opening Firefox for the first time on a fresh boot boots up right away. Now going into my Nova Spirit tech channel and then popping over say like a video or something like that. It actually runs really quick. Like I barely have to what do anything and it on? loads right away. Nova Spirit tech and welcome back to the channel. Now testing out video as far as like 1080 or 4K. Um, I did run into a little bit of a snag on 4K. So here we are. If we're using the Manjaro's video player, it actually lags like crazy. I don't know what it is with this, but switching over to something like, you see that shuttering? That's a crazy amount. But if I close this out and actually use a proper video player, like VLC media player, dropping it in here, it runs fine. I mean, it still has its slight lag and this is a 4K video file. So it does have like, you could see it still has a little bit of a shutter. But if I was to play like a 1080 video file, that all goes away. So playing 4K does have its little bit of limitation. So here you see the trees smoothly going up and down compared to what it was before. Again, I, I managed to get almost everything that I need working. Remina is working. Um, if I wanted to get um, sound and video, OBS Studio was working. Oops. And that's working pretty fine a, a, as well. And I'm getting the 30 frames per second. Not a problem. One thing I really want to test, even though it is a smaller board, it's fanless, it runs on a Vega 3 video card. So actually getting some games to work with this little board that is fanless, I didn't think it was gonna be a problem. So I tried a native game, which is Astro Menace. This is a little bit more taxing, but it's not like crazy like Tux, but I'm actually able to get this game to run pretty well. I mean, it runs really smooth here. Let me close this out and start a game. I'm not good at this game at all, I can tell you that. Let me see, F2 to toggle FPS counter. Okay, so F2. So here I'm just moving my ship. Shoot, 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 shoot. And I'm doing 108 frames per second just playing one of these 3D shooter games. I actually really like this game, guys. I could play this game for days. I've always loved like these older style uh, 1942 side scrolling shooter games. Yeah, anyway, I'm not going to stick with this for too long, but you can see it's doing 100 plus frames per second. Now, I managed to get Steam games installed too, so let's check that out. And I went down and downloaded a few games. First, I like to play this game as well, Space Run. 
and it runs pretty well. I put a little counter up here on the top left, so you're gonna see how many frames per second I'm getting. But I am getting over what it's required, like 60 frames per second, I am getting over that. So it runs pretty smooth. I did do it in window mode. And you know what, while I have this open, I'm gonna pop up a system monitor and kind of keep an eye on this in a sec. So let me just move this over to the side and I'm gonna play and start delivery. This game's actually really fun too. What you do in this game is uh, basically you have a couple of platforms and you gotta build towards it. So I gotta build like an engine here and I gotta deliver cargo. But you also are competing against other people. Oh, I got three cargo, so here, do I want here? Yeah. So start, 60 somewhat frames per second right now. That's not too bad. And it looks pretty good. Uh, so in this game, what you do is basically you purchase guns and purchase uh, other stuff like engines and you try to get by as fast as possible. So this, you know, you have enemies coming up. I'm just going to shift Consider it there it with the mouse wheel. I could just change the gun. And as they come down, I this shoot them down and then I collect money and then I could buy more engine parts. And over time, you actually increase money as well. But you see how on the bottom over here, you have other people delivering. And you kind of want to try to beat those guys. So I know two groups are going to come up from here. So I'm going to be able to afford an engine before I have to add more guns. So I'm going to be able to catch up with at least this guy. And yeah, this game's really, really fun. Collect a couple of bucks. Grab an engine. Your wish is my command. There. Now I know another group's coming here. Hopefully I could get enough Thruster, money to build a to gun go. in front to stop this in front. Uh, Right away. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff in front. Ready for action. So yeah, that's basically about it for that game. But I did install a higher, a game that requires a lot more, which is Elite Dangerous. And I'm gonna run a really quick clip over here and you can see it actually pins my RAM and my swap all the way to the top. And after loading, I'm only getting about five to seven frames per second, which is not great at all. It's not playable. And that's only from the welcome screen. Trying to get into the game itself takes forever to load, but it does load eventually. And you only get like about one to two frames per second. Not worth it for like bigger games like Elite Dangerous. But yeah, I mean, I'm able to play games with this. So it runs really, really smooth comparing to what I've been trying on this guy. Now, ultimately, this is a full x86 Ryzen computer on a 1.8 inch size and it's running Linux very well. I'm able to get 1080 videos, 4K video, but you know, a little bit of shuttering. Uh, Firefox and everything loads instantaneously. So yeah, this could actually replace some of uh, com uh, smaller computers that you need to run completely silent with no fans or anything. Now, keep in mind that this board is actually designed for digital signage and for it to be able to do this is impressive as it is. Anyway, let me know what your thoughts about on this. If you guys got any questions, leave it down in the comments below. I will be testing other operating systems with this in the near future. Let me know in the comments what you want to see on here. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say in my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.